Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. Jesus Christ is the unleavened bread of life. As we've recently looked at Passover, the next appointed time of the Lord within the seven feasts of the Lord is unleavened bread. We're going to briefly touch on how the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled this feast, this appointed time, in the Old Testament's foreshadowing of it. During the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt, we've touched on the fact that they were in bondage and that the last plague that God sent upon the land of Egypt involved the death of the firstborn. Only through the blood of the lamb were the people spared from the penalty of death as the Lord passed through the land of Egypt. We see that the very evening of Preparation Day, they ate the Passover lamb with unleavened bread. Remember, this is the 14th day of the first month. Leviticus 23 and 5, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Watch how God set this up from the very beginning. The plan of salvation and reconciliation through Jesus Christ, again, on the exact day foreshadowed in the Old Testament and fulfilled by Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Look at this. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 8. The children of Israel ate the Passover lamb with unleavened bread. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with the bitter herbs shall they eat it keep in mind who's giving this instruction who's giving these instructions of what to do and when to do it the lord he's got it all worked out from the beginning verse 1 clarifies this of exodus chapter 12 and the lord spake unto moses and aaron in the land of egypt saying right so now look at verse 8 again, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Anything look familiar? A Passover lamb eaten with unleavened bread. Remember when Jesus and the disciples ate the Passover during that last supper? It was during the evening of the 14th day of the first month. They were eating the lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs, right? Then Jesus, the Lamb of God, explains it just before he fulfills it later on that same Jewish calendar day. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's pick it up at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, points out that Symbolically, the bread represents his body, broken for us. The wine represents the blood shed by the Lamb of God. Now let's talk about the bread. Note the words in Hebrew and Greek for the Old and New Testaments, respectively. In the Old Testament, the word bread is Strong's Concordance H3899, Lechem. Unleavened bread is H4682, matzah. In the New Testament Greek, that word bread is G740, artos. 
In unleavened bread is G106, Azimos. As we study this, the bread eaten at the Passover is unleavened bread. An interesting note is that the Greek word used for bread within this text of the Lord's Supper is G740, Artos. This is the bread with leaven. We won't see the word matzah because that's a Hebrew word. The New Testament is in Greek. So what's going on here? There are two things that point to this being unleavened bread in that this word is used in a general context for bread and not a specific. First is that we know that through scripture that they were eating the Passover, which involves unleavened bread. It's a time period where no leavened bread is eaten from preparation day. That's Passover. Then afterwards, remember Leviticus 23 verse five and six in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Only unleavened bread is eaten at Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In addition, we see among the definitions, food of any kind. This points to the use of the word bread as a general term. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse 33, For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. John 6, 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. John 6, 48, he says it clearly again. I am that bread of life. John 6, 51, Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Wow. Now, here it is relative to Passover. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, there's that Lamb. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, there's that unleavened bread we see relative to the last supper the lord's supper the wine the blood that was shed by the lamb and with the bread the body of jesus broken for us but that bread was unleavened look at what leavened means let's go to first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 purge out Therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word leaven here is Strong's Concordance G2219. The transliteration, zume. It means metaphorically to eviterate mental and moral corruption viewed in its tendency to infect others. The word unleavened is Strong's Concordance G106, right? Azumus. Unleavened, that is, figuratively uncorrupted, specifically by implication, the Passover week, unleavened bread. The Thayer lexicon goes on to say unfermented, free from leaven or yeast of the unleavened loaves used in the Paschal feast of the Jews. Now, this connects us to the Last Supper as Jesus and the disciples were eating the Passover Paschal lamb. Now watch this. Metaphorically free from faults or the leaven. 
of iniquity. The faults or leaven of iniquity is the corruption of iniquity, the corruption of wickedness, right? The corruption of unrighteousness. To be free from something implies that one must be in bondage. Surely the children of Israel were in bondage in the land of Egypt. That enslavement was rooted in disobedience and sin against God. Collectively, we are all born into the bondage of sin through Adam, right? We see that in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. So we need to be set free from this bondage of sin. Only one that is without sin can deliver mankind from this bondage. He must be free from leaven, unleavened. There's no leaven in his house. Now watch now how this comes together. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. The Lord says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever seven days shall you eat unleavened bread even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that soul shall be cut off from israel this word house is used figuratively as human bodies we see it here in the old testament word houses strong concordance h1004 and here in the new testament the word house g3613 which is a residence literally or figuratively habitation house the their lexicon says a dwelling place habitation of the body as a dwelling place for the spirit. Are you seeing this? So when we look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 15, part of this ordinance is put away leaven out of your houses. So the leaven must be removed out of our houses, out of our bodies. Because if this is not done, there is a penalty. Y'all seeing this? Whosoever eats leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. During the exodus, when the Lord moved through the land of Egypt in judgment, it was the firstborn that was killed unless the blood of the lamb marked the house. Right. Jesus Christ is the firstborn killed as a ransom for those that deserved the penalty of death because of the leaven in our houses. He is that lamb of God whose blood marks the houses of those that accept this gift of God by faith. The house is cleaned, the leaven gone. Jesus Christ, the bread of life is our unleavened bread. He had no leaven in his house. Yet he suffered for those that did. Now that's all of us. He suffered death. And on that 15th day of the first month, Jesus was in the tomb, buried as that lamb slain and as the unleavened bread of life. Jesus Christ surely has fulfilled the feast, the appointed time of unleavened bread. Now, I hope this brief study helps in our understanding that the Lord had a plan for our salvation from the very beginning. He foreshadowed this through the children of Israel. He set those feasts, those appointed times of the Lord, 
so that we would believe on him. Trust Jesus. Believe on him. It's not a religion. This is a relationship. It's personal. All right. I will leave it right here. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.